James Boyce presents the first course from Scottsdale, Arizona. It is roasted diver scallops with foie gras, port wine, and poached figs, presented on an apple pear salad. The main course is prepared by Jean-Louis Paladin in Las Vegas. He presents filet of tile fish served with a vegetable ragu that contains shallots, beets, and prosciutto. Dessert is served at March Restaurant in New York City. Stacy Pierce prepares a lemon curd-based parfait with tapioca pudding and garnished with caramel sauce. Mary Elaine's restaurant in the Phoenician Resort at Scottsdale has consistently garnered culinary awards, including Triple A's Five Diamond Rating in 2000. The chef de cuisine is James Boyce. After the CIA, he worked in New York before coming to Arizona. His starter is scallop and foie gras salad. A garnish for the dish is poached figs. And there's a mixture of black mission figs and then California golden figs. They'll be poached in a mixture of port wine, orange juice, balsamic vinegar, and honey. So while that's cooking, I'm going to get my salad ready, have my greens in the bowl. Have nice little wedges of uh, the, the pear and the apple. have uh, my upland cress, I have frise, watercress, and peppercress. Just toss this in. Then I want to add a little bit of the zest. Orange sections are cut for garnish. Just add the extra juice right on top of the apples and pears, keep them from turning brown. Now the scallops, which are seasoned. Salt. They are sautéed in hot olive oil. Getting close. Now we're going to get the foie gras ready, finish the salad, a little bit of hazelnut oil, I mean walnut oil, excuse me, salt, pepper.
season of foie gras. Put it in the pan. Foie gras is typically cooked in a dry pan. You'll notice fat is exuded almost immediately. Get ready for the salad. Take a little bit of the syrup, drizzle it over the greens. Toss those. Orange has a garnish with poached figs. A little pear syrup was put around it. Then I had some of the aged balsamic. Jean-Louis Paladin is one of America's formidable cooking talents. Early work was in his native France, then he made real waves at his namesake Watergate restaurant in Washington, D.C. In 1995, he opened Napa at Rio Suite Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. From there, he presents a Florida tile dish with root vegetables. I'm going to do a beautiful fish. You see it on the table. It's a tile fish. The tile fish is coming from Florida. The, um, the deepest is one of the deepest fish you can find in Florida. It's about, it's fish at about 700 feet. It's very clean, very clean water, a beautiful, beautiful taste. Not a lot of people know the tile fish yet, but it's going to become popular in the next uh, year. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do with some roots vegetable. Here I got three kinds of red beets, of beets. The red, the yellow, and the white. I got some parsnip, some carrot, some uh, baby fennel, and some artichoke. But I'm going to do a ragu with a little stew. The stew is made with uh, some of the shallot, a little bit of onion, some prosciutto ham, thyme, bay leaf and garlic, a little bit of butter, and here you have a lobster consomme. As the oil, we're gonna use a lemon mustard oil. What I'm gonna do first, I'm going to just fill the fish for one second, but before that, I wanna start the stew. And the stew, I'm just taking some lemon olive oil, <coughs> shallots, and you don't want anything, anything to burn. Little bit of onion. The prosciutto. The prosciutto gonna give a little bit of garlic, very little. Prosciutto gonna give the, uh, the depth of the consomme some time and two bay leaves, two little bay leaves. To cook all that, 
I'm just a hard things to consume. You want to cook for about uh, six, seven minutes. What you are doing, what I'm doing here, I'm just looking where is the, the backbone, the backbone of the fish with, the, with going all on a, on, a, on a body of the fish. If, you're, if you are not lucky like us to have a fisherman who is going to fish for you, you just ask your uh, fishman to find some tile or you can have, yeah, I, I did tile because I want the nation to know what tile is. But if you have a beautiful snapper or a beautiful grouper, you can do exactly the same recipe. And you tell your fish, your fishman just to cut a piece for you or for the number of people you are cooking for. I'm doing it, I'm just cutting the, all the little bone you have in the, in the center of the filet. And here, you take a piece of fish, cut it, a portion, and that's what we're gonna, that's what we're going to saute. Okay, here you have the, the beginning of the ragu, with uh, practically done. What I'm going to do, I blanch already all the bits, all the vegetable. What I'm doing, I'm adding the vegetable, and let cook for about six, seven minutes. What I want to do, I want to salt and pepper the fish very nicely. And I'm starting to saute it. It goes skin down in hot lemon olive oil. I'm adding a little bit of butter inside the vegetable just to round it and to make it like velvet, to make the, the juice like velvet. It's just very easy. If you have the right ingredient, I don't see you need to be a chef. And now I want to check the seasoning. Wow. Very good. Uh, we need a piece of fish like that need to be cooked for about for about eight eight minutes. It's a very firm firm fish. It's not on um, uh, we don't find a lot on the market right now, but it's going to become popular. Uh, what I'm doing, I don't have I got I got the veggies, all the veggies together with the ragu. It's a, it's a beautiful winter dish because all the root vegetables now are Fantastic, they are in season. Just a little bit of mosto oil on the top to give uh, to give uh, taste of lemon. 
and the dish is finished. Bon appétit. March Restaurant in Manhattan offers the desserts of executive pastry chef Stacy Pierce. After graduating from the CIA, all of her work has been in New York, including a stint at the Union Square Cafe. She says she likes to present comfort desserts, perhaps like frozen lemon parfait and tapioca. The parfait includes lemon zest. So I'm gonna just quickly do this. I'm gonna place my sugar in the pot and again, as I said earlier, I'm going to just take it and start rubbing it in um, with my hands. It's a very nice feeling, actually. Um, it leaves your hands smelling wonderful. So the next thing I will do is I will be adding my juice. Fresh lemon juice. And cracking my eggs, four eggs. And we're ready to go over to the stove. Um, this needs to be cooked up to 180 degrees. That's why we have the candy thermometer here. Um, once it is brought up to that temperature, um, we will be allowing it to cool down to 140 degrees and then burr mixing in the butter. So I'm going to start that process right now. Can you see that the um, texture is starting to change? I can almost tell at this point that we're about right there. It starts to thicken up and it starts to really boil, you know, come to a very rapid boil. And um, at that point, I know it's done. But for you, if you're trying to, to make this, you might want to just check it with a candy thermometer. And I'm going to take my gelatin which is now, I broke it in two pieces, which is now a different consistency completely from what it started off being. It was very stiff, if you noticed. Now I'm going to just take this and place it in my hot lemon cream. And whisk it, and then we're going to allow it to cool for a little while. After cooling, butter is added using a stick blender. You could also do this in like a traditional blender of some sort. Um, having your butter at room temperature is very important. And I think you can tell right now already the color is changing. And with the aeration, with the aeration of the, the blender and the butter being mixed into it. It just has a very creamy consistency. So as I finish adding the last little bit of butter, you can tell or you can see that the consistency has changed quite a bit. The lemon cream goes into a flexi pan mold, then into the freezer overnight. The large pearl tapioca was soaked in cold water overnight. It'll be slowly cooked in milk. Two scraped vanilla beans. Oops. Pods. Um, usually the ones that you get in a market are very hard and it's difficult to open them up and sometimes they're a little dried out. But still, try to open it so even if it is hard, um, it will release a lot of the pod. Sugar, egg yolks, and cornstarch are combined for the base of the pudding. And right now I have my eggs and my sugar and cornstarch, and it's ready to be liaison tempered. What I'm going to do is take a small amount of the hot milk and place it into the sugar egg mixture, whisking it till 
it's loose. And I'm gonna place it back into the pot and stir. Continue stirring until it thickens. Now that this is frozen, um, what I like to do first is hollow out a small amount from the center using, you can use a small scoop of some sort or even just a spoon, it doesn't matter. Roll the, the uh, lemon in cookie crumbs or twill, uh, little bits of cookies that are left over, you grind up, any cookie would do. I like to just take the tapioca and like I had said earlier, very jewel-like or almost caviar-like. Caramel sauce finishes. 